Hello and welcome to the Reading Entertainment Podcast, episode 365 for August 28th, 2022. It's my mom's birthday. Anyway, uh, happy birthday, mom. And joining me this week, we have Connor, the cyberpunk monk, Besh. Coming at you live from Reading's basement. That is true, because he can't afford to live anywhere else in this economy. And we have Andrew Rowe McFain. Hello, I'm here. I actually have stayed in your basement before. You have? Yeah, it was. I should have got it. I should have got an Airbnb. Is what I'm gonna say. <laughs> I don't know. I I wouldn't have gotten an Airbnb. I think you'd be better off staying in like a Motel Six around here. Oh, that's true. Like all the Airbnbs I've stayed at have been great, but I guess I haven't stayed at. I haven't stayed at a shitty Airbnb. Yeah, but, they, they'd be shitty Airbnbs around here. No, that makes sense. That, well, I mean, I guess I could go to um, St. Louis. Would that? Would you could. The, it's, I I would imagine that since it's a bigger city, there might be more available that were decent quality. But yeah, who knows? Anyway, I of course am your host Nathan Reed Spruth, and I want to ask Aroa what games you played this week. Oh wait, where, uh, where, where can we find you? Aro dot website. Go to Aro dot website. Yeah, that's where go all to website. Are. You said yeah. it. I did you it. Did it. Yeah, and uh, of course you can find me Reeton everywhere. Go to Twitch, Twitch TV forward slash Reeton. I'm almost up to 650 followers. I'm at 649 somehow. Wow, and yet you still only have like two viewers every time. It it averages out to about like 3.5. Uh, you're just barely an affiliate yeah just just barely making it um and i only have like three or four subs so it's uh you know i get like a hundred bucks a year it's pretty pretty good i guess anyway <laughs> uh what what games have you played this week aroa um main thing has been uh death stranding uh on the on the game the pass Steam the steam deck no i've i've owned death stranding for a while how does um, it run on the the steam deck well it walks first of all <laughs> it's mainly walking no it's uh it runs great it like impressively so uh it gets very loud steam deck is not happy about running it but <laughs> as far as as far as actual performance yeah it run, runs impeccably you're like, what's that? Uh, what's that fan saying? Kill me! <laughs> like, it is. It is definitely like I. I don't. Is there? There's a wind tunnel behind the screen. Like, just constantly. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact that the uh, the ambient sound in the game does a very good job of of covering all that up, uh, I would I would be annoyed probably, but. It no, it is cool that a, it can a good run. Time. It. Is it, it? What's the frame rate on it? Is it thirty? Oh, it or... is. I I don't have the I don't have like an actual uh, frame rate monitor on while I'm playing, oh. but it's definitely above thirty. I uh, always keep like there's the I know you do. I it's always annoying keep that to me. But... Oh, okay. I always keep it on just to, so I can be like, oh, what? Maybe I can lower the settings, or if it's like constantly like jumping between 40 and 50 frames a second i'll just lock it to 40 frames a second uh just to make Ugh, it drop down to 59 for a second i gotta redo this whole damn thing yeah exactly <laughs> exactly yeah that's a that's that's the thing is like unless unless it's consistently dropping under 30 frames per second i just plain don't care because i'm playing death stranding on my couch and that's all i really cared about yeah it's really but, cool. yeah games games really cool uh very like very uh, it's it's like um like american truck simulator but the controls are are like metal gear oh i see i, I guess like i don't know 
certainly one of the most unique games ever. And there uh, is there is some combat in the game, right? It's not. I, I... There is, but I haven't gotten there yet. At the moment, all I do is run away from every threat that that comes around. Oh, so um, it's real life simulator. Yeah, pretty much. It's like. Like sometimes there's this a crazy guy who really wants to deliver my packages for me, uh, so much so that he'll beat the shit out of me to steal my packages. Uh and otherwise it's weird umbilical cord connected undead ghost demons uh that are floating around that I cannot harm even if I tried. Uh you know. who will attempt to drag me into the nether realm wherein I will have to be reborn uh by giving birth to myself or something so i didn't want to post that post it as a story because we have a lot of stories this week to talk about but uh kojima's starting a podcast yep yeah yeah i don't i don't know how well that's gonna go but he is starting oh, it's, a podcast. it's kojima i'm sure it'll go fine yeah probably. Uh, I, mean, my, I mean my main concern is uh at least last that i had heard kojima doesn't like he can he can speak english but yeah. he can't speak it very clearly is the thing he's got a very hard accent yeah to listen yeah. to and it, well, that's that's what i am i'm curious about is how well the quality is going to be of it um i know it's going to get a lot of people listening to it the, that's not really my concern my concern is just how how good it's going to be but who knows it'll be fine uh where did you play anything else uh or just death stranding on your steam deck um vampire survivors had a pretty uh substantial update with a new character i haven't unlocked her yet but i'm still playing that game cool. it's uh it's really good i can imagine uh, and, it's great on the steam deck oh it's fantastic on steam deck like it's it's funny even because like I was thinking whenever I saw it initially that like, wow, that'd be a really great game to play on the switch. And then I was like, wait, it's, I can, I, it, whenever I can get it on steam deck, it's going to be great on steam deck. And, and it was. so, yeah, it's, oh, it's so good. Uh, I wish there were more games that were as good as it. And it's funny cause it's only like three bucks. Yeah. It's such a fantastic bargain. And not only that, I got it for free. Just friend of the show, Earl, which was like, here you go. Yeah. So good times. Thank you, Earl, if you're listening to the podcast. We're going to move on to Connor and ask what games you played this week. The only two I played that were worth mentioning was Space Station 13. And I promise I won't take too long because it would go way too much detail for the purpose of the podcast for how I got there. But I was a quantum clown which is to say every, I don't know, 15 seconds or so, I would just zoink to a new part of the station. And I had a lot of fun with that. Oh, good. Uh, if, you, if you know anything about Space Station 13, but you haven't checked it out, just try it out. You'll, you'll, you won't regret it, unless read, you're Nathan. Read 14 pages of tutorials and watch countless YouTube videos so you know how to play the game. It's, then... it's, got, a, it's got a learning curve, but I mean, it it's, a, it's a game about learning. It does. It's and a lot of fun. What else did you play? And on my Steam Deck, I've been playing that new Vegas, and that sure is like a 12-year-old game at this point. Uh, at 11? Yeah, something like that. Good game. I, I'm going through all the old achievements that I don't have, and now I'm doing all the DLC for the achievements I don't have. So, I don't know, probably around this time next week, I'll be talking about the next game that I'm playing on my Steam Deck. Fallout 4! Maybe. I already got it installed. Fallout. It sure has replaced my Nintendo Switch for the game that I uh, the the Game Boy that I play before bed. Yeah, I do like that it can play those games at uh, sixty frames a second. I am curious how the Steam Deck will play Outer Worlds, because that is one of the one of the games that I was looking forward to when it released a couple of years ago. I played it on my PC, and then it came out on the Switch, and was awful. Just completely terrible. So I do wonder how it runs on the Steam Deck as compared to the Switch. You know, I have it on my Steam library, and that is one of those games that I didn't give an honest first attempt. So yeah. uh, maybe we'll find out next week. Yeah, and it's only like 20 hours long. So it's not. It's like 20 to 25 hours long, and that's if you do like everything in the game. 
So it's it's definitely worth, you know, a week or two to play through it. And we're going to move on to me and the games I played. Uh, on Monday, I played Super Hot. Uh, I never played Super Hot before. I have played Super Hot VR, but never the actual, you know, the, the first game. And it was good. And I beat it in like an hour and a half because the story of that game is very, very short. And then after you're done with the story, they open up a lot of like challenge and, and time attack modes. Uh, I played some of those, but it was uh, it's fun. It's a good game. I would recommend it. It's a first person shooter that when you are not moving, time is it still moves, but it moves incredibly slow. I would say, and I don't know if Aroa and Connor would agree with me, but I would say the VR version is better. Oh, definitely. Like, something about, like, the guys will shoot at you, and then, like, the bullets, you know, they move slow because you're, you're not moving. And then when you are moving, uh, the bullets are moving towards you, and you can, like, see, look with the VR and just see the bullet, like, whiz by your face. And something about that is really, really cool. The the That's... most correct answer I think I could give is just that it's a first person shooter in VR. It's just a better platform for that sort of thing. It really is. And it's it's a lot more satisfying to play in VR. Definitely. Yeah. I think the the standard version is more of a more of a game. Yeah. To 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 put it that way, like like the, the VR version feels like somebody said hey can you guys make a vr version of this whereas the original game feels like something someone made out of passion for wanting to make something new and unique yeah. give it me has... the walk through the hallway experience i still i still really like I, I like both of them i think that they're both really good and i think i got it for free on epic games during christmas or something like that when they're handing out a f new free game every day and so i got a a I got that a while back and was like, oh, I'll play through it. I haven't, I haven't ever played through the original Super Hot. And I would highly recommend it. And then on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I played some Final Fantasy V. And uh, I am still confused as to why that game wasn't released in the United States back in the day. I think it is a, a fine game, fine JRPG. I guess it was because, you know, RPGs weren't really big back in the, the early 90s in the United States. So but that's probably why I never His name is released. Butts, Reedon. You can't it's, have a main character be named Butts. It's Bartz. It's Butts. It's, it's, it's Bartz, according to the translation. <laughs> I Yes, I, I have played the, uh, the ROM back in the day as well. I never beat the game, though. And I think it's good. I think it's just as, or I think it's better than Final Fantasy IV, but not as good as Final Fantasy VI. Obviously, I God, I love five for what it did to make just a, a great class slash job system. God, I love it. I love it so much. It's really good. And it's been used in uh, both of the MMORPGs for for Final Fantasy have used a similar job system. Which is amazing that it's been, you know, 20 years. Over 20 years. <laughs> I'm so old uh, since those games released and uh, it's still, they're still using that system just in a different way. Anyway. Uh, and then on, uh, on Friday I was like, Hey, Durga, want to play, want to play something, you know, payday or halo or Fortnite or something. And he, cause I know he's been playing Fortnite a little bit lately. So I was like, I'll, I'll I'll play Fortnite in the non-build mode and try it out. The Dragon Ball stuff's pretty cool. I think that's leaving soon. I think it. I think it left. It either leaves today or it's already gone. Yeah. And he was like, "Well, let's play Power Wash Simulator." <laughs> and I'm like, "All right, whatever." So we played Power Wash Simulator, and it wasn't. It's not bad. It it is exactly what you would think it is. You're walking around with a fucking hose, cleaning stuff. Um, but it but I had fun, you know, playing with uh with Durga, and it's apparently a very relaxing game. Lots of people play it to to relax. Apparently, I, apparently, 
Uh, it's included with Game Pass. So that's the reason I played it. He he pre-ordered it. Uh, or <laughs> he bought it in early access. And I was like, why? But whatever. It's included with Game Pass. So I decided to pick it up. And uh, I was fine. I'll, I'll, I'll probably play it again if Durga wants to do that. But yeah. And then I got my, my ARC graphics card yesterday. And um, I haven't been able to use it for the intended purpose of streaming, but I will be doing that tomorrow. Uh, but I did find out that it does not work with TDAR. Do you remember what TDAR is? <laughs> I, I could come up with a number of joke answers, but I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. It is a, it is a program that you can run that basically uses Handbrake to automatically convert file sizes for you or uh like you know reprocess movies and stuff for your plex so you can save i've saved like two terabytes of data by running it through this oh it's one of the one yeah. of the rr programs yeah i see and uh turns out it does not work with arc gpus at all and uh, no matter what plug-in or setting you're using well they're brand new they are they are brand new uh i thought maybe because it says when you open up xsplit it says quick sync so i thought yeah. maybe it would use the same stuff as quick sync and i would it, just be able to run through that but no it, it doesn't work well it may be a matter of like the it, it just needs to be told like hey this is a valid encoding device yeah because otherwise it's like it, it may use quick sync like as an api but unless the application knows that that driver id is a, a video encoder it's just gonna go i don't know what the hell that thing is get out of here yeah so and there... no one's going to buy any of those arc gpus so it Nobody. might be a while before the developer does anything with it. Zero people are going to buy it except for me. I'm the only person who wanted to lay down 120 bucks for one. So I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was like, man, I, I really want TDAR to work. So I, I figured out a way, and that is to set up a new server on my main computer. Uh, and then I had to map my Plex drive as a drive on my main computer so that way i could run tdar on my my main computer and then automatically convert files with my 3070. <laughs> so uh that well, took that's a while. inferior video encoding quality well it is now you're gonna have you're gonna have to go back later once they add av1 encoder support and you're going to have to re-encode everything again. I know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to suck. But here's also... Well, actually, probably what I would do is I would just... Anything new, I would turn into AV1. That's probably what I would do. But also, uh, I don't think Plex supports AV1 yet. So, uh, to be honest, I have no idea. I've so, never thought yeah, about I have that. No clue. Yeah, so if you post an AV1 video as one of your folder or one of your files and i could test it out i could take one of my um and i might test it out actually i might i, I might take one of my movies or something and use handbrake to convert it to because handbrake does have av1 support i believe in the beta and uh see if it works on plex but i i don't think in any of their documentation they mention av1 so we'll that's why see. people come to the read and entertainment channel for our groundbreaking uh boots on the ground journalism well i mean speaking about plex we are going to move on to uh some news stories and i guess we'll start with that one uh plex got hacked damn it Reeton. what i'm blaming you for this that what's not my fault i didn't do it i would i would not be on plex if not for you so ergo now, this is all, all everyone good job loser <laughs> it's all my jellyfin uh, you know yeah, i've, I, I've I thought really about should've. it to be fair, when I when I set up my Plex originally, Jellyfin didn't exist. Should have used uh, MB. Uh, MB does did exist at the time, I think, but it it's not mm -hmm. as good. Yeah, it is. Is it? It's I the same no thing. Okay. It. I. I would probably if I were to set up a new server right now, I would probably use Jellyfin 
but I'm already, I'm too deep. Uh, you know, it's that sunk cost fallacy. I've already spent the money. Um, and Plex, they, they immediately, from what I understand, immediately once they found out, they pushed like, hey, everyone needs to reset their passwords. They also came out and said that no, um, like passwords were, no passwords were leaked. Or, or caught in this, but they are doing the password reset as kind of a temper or as a as a preventative measure, and then also they said that no credit card or billing information was saved on the server, so that were accessed. So that's good. I think I think they're okay with that. Um, yeah, all in all, it's it's not actually that huge of a deal. Yeah, we we got this story from Ars Technica. It says yesterday we just uh, this is a quote from them. Yesterday we discovered suspicious activity on one of our databases. Company officials wrote in an email. Uh, we immediately began an investigation, and it does appear that a third party was able to access a limited subset uh, subset of data that includes emails, usernames, and encrypted passwords. So they were encrypted passwords. I believe that's why they. Uh, decided to make everyone reset their passwords. And and that's a good step. That's what you what you want to have happen. Also with these emails being leaked. Um watch your spam mail. You might get people who are like emailing you being like, "Hey, we have passwords and we have at, we know all of the video files that you have on your Plex." Um, and we're going to tell the authorities unless you give us two or $500. That might happen. Uh, and if, if that does happen, they're bullshitting you. They don't, they don't know what's on your Plex. Uh, scammers will generally do that. They'll, they'll have some information and then make you believe that they have more information about you to try to get that money out of you. So don't, but yeah. don't fall for it. Don't. Don't fall for it if, if that's the case. Um, so what do you guys think about this? I, I mean, I think that they handled it as well as they could have. Uh, but that's just yeah. me. I'm, I would want more info on how exactly they got hacked yeah. to see how much I can make fun of them. <laughs> um, I get from but, a security standpoint why you don't want to go broadcasting that sort of thing. Yeah. But... At least they disclosed like the specifics of what data was breached. Yeah, yeah. it it was probably something. Uh, a, a lot of times with like password databases and stuff, it's a matter of oops, we left like a default account active in the S3 bucket or some some other like stupid thing that some intern forgot to yeah. do. Uh, oops, yeah, all was... admin. Yep, somebody somebody gave away their password, and that's how the people got in. And uh, I don't know. I'm I'm just making stuff up, but they, they they do say that they've already addressed the method that this third party employed to gain access to the system. Which I assume, if it was an intern, that means they killed the intern. They have addressed this. They have addressed the issue uh, in their own methods. They have um, been sacrificed to the corporate courts. They are doing additional reviews to ensure that the security of all of the systems are further hardened to prevent future incursions. While the account passwords were secured in accordance with best practices, we're require, requiring all Plex users to reset their password, which is like 13 million people. That's a, there are a lot of people who use Plex. Um, not everyone ha is like me who has their Plex server. But there are a lot of people who ha who are like me that have Plex servers, and then their friends or family members will uh, watch th watch their home videos, right? That's what's all what it, what's on everyone's Plex is home videos. One yeah. of my old coworkers once, I had to like pull him aside and be like, "Homie, I, I could see like your state ID and your passport. Um, I'm a cool guy, but you better clean your shit up." Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Anyway, so Plex was hacked. Uh, everyone has to reset your pass their password. If you happen to have a Plex account, I will urge you to go and and reset your password. And we're gonna move on, and we're gonna talk about Movie Pass. Why are we still talking about Movie Pass? They sure are trying it again, aren't they? Yeah, fool me. How many times is this? Fool me once, twice, three times. 
Um, Three times a movie pass. Yeah, it's 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 not great. So I guess the original guy who founded Movie Pass came back, and they're trying a new business model. Um, you can sign up. Just so you know, there is a wait list to be able to join Aroa, and that wait list. Oh. Uh, it says access to join the waitlist will be live for five days beginning Thursday, August 25th and ending August 29th at 11.59 p.m. So you have one day to join the waitlist. So if you want to do that, because you had movie pass before, didn't you? No. Oh, I thought you did. No, I hate movies. Oh, right. Who was it that had movie pass? You should do it. Join the waitlist. No, that's I'm good. Okay, so uh, movie pass. Why do you hate? Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> so it's they're they're changing it up. It used to be, I believe, ten dollars a month, and I think they may have raised it to fifteen dollars a month at one point. And you could basically you had a credit card and you could go watch as many movies as you wanted with that card. Then they started doing different things with movie pass because it was costing them a lot of money and they were losing a ton of money because people were doing what they were, what they were paying for. And, um, they would start implementing like, Oh, if this, if it's a brand new movie, like a brand new Marvel movie, that's going to be highly anticipated. You can't use your card on this. You have to wait a couple weeks before you can watch it on movie pass, stuff like that. Um, they do say that it's going to work on a tiered system where it'll be $10, $20, or $30 per month, which is, I think $30 is a bit much. Uh, um, actually, so I watched a video recently about MoviePass uh -huh. and like the history of the whole company. Oh. Uh, I think that's slightly cheaper than what they originally were. Um. Because MoviePass actually existed for almost 10 years before they got popular. And their their fee was huge. I think it was like $37 a month. Uh, you watched the Illuminati video, right? Yep. Yep, me too. Um, <laughs> Why do we, we, we just have the same subscription feed? <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it, it just knows who we are. Every once in a while, because I, I want to say that I heard a while back that like YouTube and stuff will work on your wi-fi so like if somebody else is watching something on your wi-fi even if it's in like on their account and stuff it'll be like oh this person that's in your household likes this so we're gonna start recommending some of those channels to you that I'm like absolutely yeah. happens yeah and i don't like that at all yeah because um, like, let me tell cool. you i have zero interest in watching women do their nails <laughs> you're like i do my own nails and it's fine and, and like my my wife went through a phase where she was watching like internet drama and uh particularly like these horrifically obese women being involved in internet drama and i kept getting those kind of videos in my feed and i'm like why that no no it's not me google stop it so I just want you to know that that based on the tangent we just went on, none of us give a shit about Movie Pass. No, uh, not even a little bit. Um, I, I, I mean, I like the idea of of Movie Pass of paying a subscription if you're gonna go watch movies in theaters more than once a month, right? Because it's expensive to go to the movies nowadays. Um, to have some sort of subscription so that you could go there and just be like, here's my card, whatever. Give me my free popcorn. Let me go watch a movie. Um, for thirty for thirty dollars a month, the CEO of Movie Pass will show up in a trench coat and <laughs> allow you to sneak in with him if he pays for the movie. <laughs> but but my thing is that I just don't I don't watch movies enough. I like watching movies in theaters, but we have a movie theater in my town. But it's not like a Regal or AMC, and I'm not sure Movie Pass will work on like little independent movie theaters. Do either of you know? Uh, I have no idea how this new setup is going to work. Yeah. Um, those who want to try it, come first come first serve wait list, which will open. We've already spoke about the times. It'll end tomorrow, uh, the 29th at midnight. 
Um, if you're I know selected... it's like... Nope. I was going to say, I do know, or I seem to recall the new system's going to be like token-based. Yeah, it's a credit. Uh, you'll receive... So it does say here, if you're selected and you become a member, you'll get 10 invites that you can send to friends. Uh, returning users who are on the wait list will receive extra credits when they join. Which uh, I guess is on a... Yeah, it's on a credit system. They don't have like any information of how it's going to work though even in the facts um it says what the price will be but they don't say like how those credits are going to be used or how you're actually going to watch movies with movie pass so we'll yeah. we'll see what happens hopefully it'll it'll do well but we're going to move on we're going to talk about the Nintendo Switch and um DRM our favorite thing to, to have on any game system, not only DRM, they're bringing Denuvo to the Nintendo Switch. Why? Why are they bringing Denuvo to the Nintendo Switch? And apparently it's because... You, uh, you, I mean, emulators. you know why. It's emulators. Well, yeah. they're, 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 they're are, there's a couple of reasons. First off, people are hacking their Nintendo Switches. And then playing games that they download online. That that happens. I can't believe people would hack their switches, Aroa. I know. <laughs> I mean, who would do such a thing? Who, who would, would do such a who thing? Would, who would hack their switch with the specific intent of playing particular switch games on their on their switch without paying for them? That would be that would be, that would be, be gross awful. and awful. illegal. Yeah. And highly illegal. Um I I have a launched Nintendo Switch, so hacking my nintendo switch i think i just have to breathe on it in the right spot and uh yeah and you <laughs> and that's how you hack it but i haven't done it yet. i haven't i haven't turned on my switch in like six months you have a steam deck i have a steam there's deck. no reason to i know right and and yeah yeah i the, uh, there is a reason to and that reason was breath of the wild but i can get that on my steam deck now uh-huh so Exactly. Anyway. Now, now I do have something to complain about with this, and why I, I don't think um, that anyone's actually going to make use of the Nuvo on their on their Switch. It's just uh, so games. stupid. It's so stupid. Well, not, so the the problem with the Nuvo is that you have to be online yeah. whenever you start the game. Yeah. And the Switch is a fucking portable console. Without, so... It's not only is a portable console that uses Wi-Fi, it does not have the ability to use like a, a 3G or 4G accessory for it. Like, right? You could hotspot on your on your phone every time you wanted to start up a game, but that would suck. I think the yeah. Vita the Vita had 3G, right? Uh, only models certain good. models. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I, I meant. It. Like, yeah, some of them had it, uh, not all of them. Yeah. But yeah, I hope that they don't do this. Like it, or or no games actually utilize this. It's stupid. I mean, it's it's only gonna hurt people that are actually paying for your games. Um. And do I kind of remember Denuvo being like a massive resource hog too? Yes. Yeah, Denuvo also has a reputation for causing performance issues. In games, which on the Switch, you know, might... Uh, that might be a, a big deal. Yeah. A little <laughs> bit. Okay, so I, I assume Aroa also watches Modern Vintage Gamer? Uh-huh. Uh, a quote from him said that Denuvo is the world's shittiest DRM that is <laughs> coming to the Nintendo Switch and it will only hurt the paid customer. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's going to make it more inconvenient to play any games that use it as it currently is in incredibly inconvenient. Yeah, it's only going to make performance in games that use it even worse. And of course, as with all DRM, the classic problem of uh, pres preservation, yeah. you know, well, it, like games, it games that 
run on Switch that used a Nuvo, it's going to be even more difficult in the future to be able to play those games whenever they're no longer available. And what's going to happen is the hackers are going to be able to crack this. Like, when Denuvo first came out, it took a long time for those first couple of games to get cracked. Um, and then it just got... Well, now it doesn't happen. They, they don't crack it, or...? No, they don't. Denuvo is, Denuvo is absolutely the best DRM solution on the market in terms of preventing piracy. Oh, like, I, 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 don't know, I don't know how much you like try to play pirated games, but no, I, anymore, I any, anymore, if you look into any game that uses Denuvo, there are no torrents for it. Um, there might be like some private scene distributions that I don't have access to, but even the scenesters that I do keep track of, there is no consistency. Uh, the cracks that have come around, they haven't even actually been cracks on the DRM it's, uh, itself so much as like side channel attacks where uh, with the earlier versions of Denuvo, you could get a decrypted copy of the main executable after you launched the game. And then you could you could use that, um, and, and that that sort of stuff was po uh, was possible with. But with more recent versions of Denuvo, it is it's so hard that no one does it. Interesting. That's the thing. Well, in the future, I have little doubt that like we'll be able to break it, but it's going to require a lot of time and resources that the small group of people who would be working on it. I mean, it's it's going to take an inordinate inordinate amount of time to do interesting, it. Interesting, interesting. Well, that's good for them, I guess, uh, for Denuo. But I, I hope I don't think that a lot of games are going to use Denuo on the Switch because Switch games are having an, enough of a problem running at thirty frames a second right now, as we mentioned with yeah. like a Outer Worlds, and trying to get. Yeah. You know, oh, let's add another layer of complexity to that. That's going to not help out a lot. And I would imagine the community would kind of rally behind, like, hey, let's get, let's say Breath of the Wild 2 uses Denuvo. I could see that being a big enough game that the community would try to hack it. Like, that would be one game that they would really want to break and bring to PC. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. Uh, and we're going to move on to our last stories. Gamescom happened this weekend. There were a lot, a lot, a lot of announcements. Um, and what we have been doing recently, instead of covering every single announcement like we used to, uh, and then and taking like two or three hours to talk about them all, uh, we're just, we each select a couple. And that we want to talk about two or three, and then we uh, we talk about those those ones. So let's start with Connor. What game uh, trailers and stuff did you want to talk about that came out of Gamescom? Well, the thing about that is I need to scroll up, and oh, that's right. The first one that I wanted to talk about was the Callisto Protocol, which, as I'm sure both of you and all of the audience remembers, is Dead, Dead Space, Space made by not Dead Space. Mm -hmm. And they did the opposite of a trailer, which is they just showed gameplay footage, which I think was a great idea. And this game looks like it is going to be like Mortal Kombat levels of just unnecessarily gory, but while maintaining its horror atmosphere. It shows some gameplay with this game's version of like the, the kinetic freeze, which is I I really don't know how to describe it yet. It's it's kind of like a levitation y gravity gunny kind of thing and he threw somebody and into a windmill or something all sorts of things he's he's walking through the hallway of grinders which definitely is not osha approved i don't know oh, how no. that thing got into space it cannot be up to code and oh, there's I was no laws in space that's why <laughs> that's right no laws only rights yeah the the i, I was a little worried because it's like oh you could just freeze things and throw oh uh, I guess it's going to be an easy game. And, and then they show him going one-on-one -on -one combat. And I'm not sure if it's just because it's the, the average person who they get to do these videos who has an IQ of like 30. But he was getting his ass kicked. Yep. Which is a good sign in a horror game. And then, if you two remember Tomb Raider, 
uh, they they have that oh, sequence that. in Tomb Raider where you go in the the waterfall, and, and like it even ends basically in the same like hyper gory way. There's no way that wasn't something that somebody saw like in a team meeting and was like, "Remember that sequence? Let's have sequences like that." So what he's talking about, there is a scene. There there are several scenes in one of the Tomb Raider games, the newer ones, where you are going down like a not a waterfall per se, but like down a river. And um, there are obstacles in the river. And if you make one wrong move, like you'll get impaled with a, with like a spike. And Just that's kind of, that's kind of what happens on here. Uh, and I'm literally watching it while I'm talking and he just made a mistake and got cut in half by a fan. Uh huh. It's like so, a turbine or something. Yeah. Like that's an industrial way to go. Fan. Yeah. Uh, it looks good. Uh, I like that they have a gameplay trailer for it. I don't think I'll be picking it up. It's not the type of game I would like, but uh, are you going to be... Are are you thinking about picking it up when it comes out, Connor? Probably not when it comes out, because I I just don't really get games when they come out anymore, to be honest. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think that this game is uh, is included with Game Pass. So Reeton will be playing it after all. Maybe. I might I might play it. Yes. Um and what was the second game you wanted to talk about? The second game that I wanted to bring up was a game called Moonbreaker. You know how Nathan you're always joking and saying like, "Oh, you should get a game that allows you to paint your minis and play with them." <laughs> like that they they heard you. That's what this is. They did. It it looks I like I can't tell if it's trying to make fun of just a little bit like a like like Overwatch or Heroes of the Storm, just like with the the over preppy kind of in your faceness of the the character attitudes, but they're all just like bases on miniatures, and it plays out from what I could tell, kind of like a game like Warhammer would. And oh my goodness, I was so happy when I saw this trailer. Yeah, and you could I... even individually paint the models, like like specifically the details they'll carry over. This game was made by people who do war gaming. Oh, yeah. I saw this and I was like, yeah, this is a game that Connor would like. Now, I hope that the gameplay is as polished as the painting. Um, I think that it looks like if you like this sort of, you know, tabletop game and, and painting your characters and stuff, uh, you're going to like the game but I'm not sure exactly how it works out. I think it would be better if it were like a Warhammer game, right? Because Warhammer already has that built-in base of fans that would gravitate towards something like this. I don't know. If Games know... Workshop sees this game do well and was like, we could have just done that the whole time, <laughs> I would be very satisfied with that outcome. I could see them doing that. Be like, damn it, we could have just done that, what people have been telling us to do for years now? Yes. Yes, you could have. Um, is this a game that you're interested in getting? Yes, yes, very much. Are you going to get it in early access on September 29th, 2022? Uh, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. How m I don't know how much it's going to cost, but uh, hopefully it's not a full $60. Hopefully it's more like 30 or $40. Yeah, $30 sounds correct for something like this. Yeah. Uh, let's move on, and we'll talk to Aroa about uh, games. What games were you interested in talking about? Aroa. Let me unmute my mic first. Oh, okay. Um, the one that I am excited about, that I've been excited about, I think I've even mentioned previously, I'm excited about, uh, was The Devil in Me the new uh, Dark Pictures anthology game. All right. Yes. They, they finally came out with some gameplay footage, and it looks very different and very cool. Uh, so if you've not played any of the other, I believe it's Supermassive is the dev. Yeah. Uh, if you've not played any of their other games, uh, they're very much akin to the Telltale a series of games where sort of a glorified point and click adventure uh you control your your character with like an almost survival horror style fixed camera angle sort of thing going on 
um, they have changed that in oh. this. Uh, now it is more of an over-the-shoulder camera angle a la the Resident Evil remakes, mm. uh, where you have a very minimal but still present heads-up display. Uh, looks like you can switch between equipment in the bottom left corner with the D-pad, which is very unique. Oh, like, it's a JRPG. Cool. It, what? I'm no, joking. it's just... It, it, it looks like an action game. I know. Um, which is very unlike Any uh, anything, other... yeah. anything that they've ever, they've ever, and they did play with it uh, a little bit in uh, House of Ashes, where there were a couple of segments where you had a character that had a gun, uh, like, a, like an assault rifle or something. Well, and I saw, I saw you play through the latest one, I believe, and there was, well, you and your, your family. And there was a scene where you had to shoot shoot a werewolf. Well, yeah, that that wasn't a Dark Pictures game, but same oh, same okay. company, same same style. Uh, they they have had segments like that before, where like you have a gun. Um, House of Ashes was like it actually had sort of more of a. It, it wasn't like like a glorified quick time event like they are in a lot of the other ones, including in the quarry in the case of, of this game, it looks like they may have more segments where it's actually going to be uh, resident evil five and onward kind of over the shoulder, typical third person shooter type gameplay. Maybe they haven't shown that, but it looks like it has the possibility and it's kind of funny to me. Uh, because I knew immediately whenever the teaser initially came out, this was going to be a play off of saw and that is exactly what it is. It's, it's them trying to make their own saw video game. Uh, Uh, and it's funny to me that they decide this is the time to make that camera angle and control style change because it, it just makes it that much more reminiscent of the actual saw video games. Um, but they've they've said that like it, just like with the other games, uh, every character can die. Uh, they, if Aro they and his fa- if Aro and his family are playing, every character will die. There's a very good chance of that. <laughs> uh, every character can die, but also every character is written such that any of them can play the role of the protagonist, which makes me interested in how the story is going to play out. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like this style of game, but I am very much into it. So, uh, yeah, uh, this has only made me even more hyped. I believe it comes out in November. November right? 18. Yeah. So it says. looks really cool. Um, it, it just, yeah, very hyped for it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I'm going to I'm going to do something ironic and talk about something that I'm not actually excited about that. I, 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 so I was, is the thing, uh, high on life is a new title from Squanch games, uh, which they were originally called Squanch Tendo, I believe. But then somebody with, uh, either, either they got a cease and desist from Nintendo or somebody in their legal department was like, we should probably change your name. Uh, yeah. But this is uh, the, is it, I believe, Justin Roiland is his name? Uh, The Rick and Morty guy. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. that's correct. Uh, So it is his game studio. They have previously released a couple of VR exclusive titles. Uh, I don't think they've done any that aren't VR until now. Uh, This is more of a typical first person shooter style game, but trying really hard to be comedic. Uh, And that's kind of where I don't like it anymore. Uh, It it sucks because the art style is very nice. It looks unique. Uh, The the it almost looks like um, the level of uh like the neverhood sort of like claymation style animation but it's super high res it's like it's like if if you did doom <laughs> but 
but in the the art style of of an old like claymation sort of thing it's it's weird yeah yeah it's like trek's quest I yeah think. yeah okay yeah it's, it's like doom it's just a lot more like colorful and it, silly i guess yeah it's very wacky the thing is um your gun doesn't shut the fuck up and apparently you also have a knife that also doesn't shut the fuck up yeah and i've never made it a secret that i absolutely hate games wherein the protagonist will not shut the fuck up well it's not um, the protagonist it's the sidekicks and, yeah and and like this is this is just as bad if not worse because not only are they being annoying they're trying to be funny and it's not fucking funny okay yeah. like i <laughs> i i don't want to come across as one of the the like edgy kids it's like uh rick and morty's not funny it's just a guy and he's just doing stupid voices and that's the whole show like but my god that that kind of humor can only carry you so fucking far and the trailer that they released the with the gameplay uh, it's it's just that it's just you've got morty is the gun like the gun it the, justin roiland's just doing the morty voice yeah. like straight up and then you've got the knife that's like i think like from new zealand or something maybe it's australian i can't really tell oh, the difference yeah, yeah, most yeah, of the time probably probably australian because it's a knife oh uh, i guess yeah okay that yeah. makes sense yeah yeah but no it's uh and it just doesn't it, it just keeps talking about stabbing and it's like it's the kind of thing that so i think borderlands had a gun that could talk yep that doesn't surprise um, me yeah it's had a couple and they they what he's they, buffering they like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah my brain's buffering um they they like did it better because the gun doesn't talk constantly. It's just like kind of little quips here and there. And so far they've done nothing in, in to illustrate that that's what they're doing here. It just seems like there's going to be a constant flow of Justin Roiland babbling and for like six hours. You're probably correct in, in that, they want to market to the people who like Rick and Morty. Um, I yeah. have never watched Rick and Morty, so I can't really say if I like it or not. Um, it doesn't Re really... Really? Yeah, never Reading watched it. the hipster. It. Never watched it. Uh, lots of people have spoken about it, but I've, I don't... Um, I watch a lot of random stuff that's not, you know... I, I don't watch shows when they're airing, typically. Usually, I mean, he so watches a lot of porn. Yeah, and that's it. I no, mean, no, no. It's just like I will wait until a season or a show is over, and then I'll just binge it. And I tend to like things with like a, a overarching narrative, rather than there. There is yeah. one. Oh, good. That's good. Anyway, so. uh, never watched Rick and Morty, but uh, I would imagine that this game, because it involves that guy, is just trying to grab that crowd. And yeah. maybe it's just for the trailers that they have kind of a, it being over the top with how much they talk. I don't know. But I, they, yeah. like there's a boss fight in in that video and like the boss doesn't shut the fuck up either. <laughs> it's just constant. Right, well, did like, you guys play Trover Saves the Universe, which is a, a VR and Nintendo Switch game? No, I didn't know it was on Switch. It is, and it also is a game where Justin Roiland just doesn't shut the fuck up for three hours straight. Oh, good. That was kind of what I heard. So, yeah, that was why I hadn't, I hadn't played it. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to move on to me. We're going to talk about the games I want to talk about. Uh, I think I was forced to talk about the first game, and that was uh, AEW. Uh, what's it called? It's, doo -doo -doo. I'm scrolling down. AEW Fight Forever. Um. I did either of you watch this trailer? No. Um, I watched well, the like IGN interview thing. Yeah, that's what I'm watching, not the trailer. Uh I did see the trailer. 
Um, there are some animation. It's a AEW is a wrestling company, so it's a wrestling game. In case you don't know what AEW is, and you're listening to this, but uh, it's trying to recreate the WCW NWO Revenge and No Mercy gameplay, and it looks like it's doing a decent job of it. Uh, they do showcase in this in this interview. Um, I don't know. The first like minute is all like just WCW No Mercy or WWF No Mercy, uh, and then they move on to showing some AEW gameplay. They show that you can have um, intergender matches, uh, so they show Britt Baker versus Adam Cole, and then uh, later on they showcase some Kenny Omega versus Adam Cole, I believe, as well. Uh, they don't show off any tag team matches, though I'm sure there's going to be tag team matches involved. And I personally don't like the graphics. It feels outdated. Is that just me? Like, it feels like the graphics are from, like, 10 years ago. Uh, not just that, but the animations look like shit, and supposedly yeah. that's because they didn't use any mocap? I thought they did use mocap, but I could be he wrong. He said they did no mocap for oh. the game. All of all of the like finishing moves and stuff are all handcrafted, which interesting sounds good on the surface. But then you actually watch it and you see how everyone's like snapping into position and stuff. Yeah, and, and... there there is a spot later on. Okay, at at skip to two thirty, uh, two forty three, two forty two. And look at when he slides out of the ring. It looks uh -oh. really awkward. Yeah, it's like it's got to get its voxels right or something. Yeah. And I obviously, I'm going to get this game. It's a, it's a wrestling game. I will buy it. I will play it. And it's probably going to be fun. Uh, I'm just hoping that it, it does well and they can then iterate later on with, with more games. Maybe use some mocap. That'd be pretty great. Uh, it is made well, by Ukes. The budget was probably like 25 bucks. So. That's true. Uh, so Ukes famously made all the little wrestling games for WWE since like the mid 2000s, early 2000s. So like all of the SmackDown and SmackDown versus Raw games were made by Ukes. Um, all of the WWE 2K games up until 2K20 were made by Ukes. So they left uh, in 2019 to go work on this AEW game, I think. It and that's, seems that way. And that's why 2K20 sucks so bad. <laughs> uh, so, so it's not like it's, it's a random developer and it's their first time making a wrestling game. So I'm going to assume it's going to be good. And also, if you look at all the footage... I don't know when the game comes out. It doesn't say when it's going to come out, but it is still in development. So hopefully a lot of those issues that we're looking at with the animation, I still think they're going to have issues with the animation, uh, but hopefully some of those will be ironed out, like the uh, him sliding out of the ring um, or, or some of the moves that they're doing to each other being a little bit awkward. Um. But yeah, so I don't know when it's coming out. I hope it does come out. And at least they showed gameplay. That's They didn't just show a trailer. And Yeah, gonna... it's a lot better than half the fucking games on this list. Yeah, and, and most of the games, even the one I'm going to talk about that I'm somewhat interested in, is also just a trailer. Um, and that is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. For some reason, oh, <laughs> it is a three versus seven multiplayer game. I'm actually, I'm actually like pretty hyped. I'm pretty it. sure like, it's three clowns versus seven humans. Yeah. And it is, it is made by the same people who made the Friday the 13th game. The one that was actually good. No, it is not. I thought it was. It is made by one director. Oh, from the executive from... director of Friday the 13th. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I misread that. You are correct. No, it's okay. Everyone's getting that wrong. That's, that's why I said it the way that I did. Okay. Killer uh, Clowns from Outer Space is set to be released early next year. Um, I am happy that they're using 
a different IP for this because there are some IPs like Friday the 13th that the reason they died, the reason that game died was because they they they're in kind of a licensing limbo where uh some people are suing other people for rights and so it's all in like a standstill and the judge was like hey you can't make any new content for Friday the 13th uh until we figure this out and so that just screwed over that game yep um and i think killer clowns from outer space is it's a bit less uh famous and a bit less weird with how their licensing works so hopefully everyone's it goes favorite on intellectual while. property killer clowns from outer space i can't wait until they make the blob the video game uh you know that uh the creators of um friday the 13th the game though they are actually working and will soon be releasing a ghostbusters 4v1 game oh that sounds good yeah Sounds good really phasmophobia good. they do show off a little bit of gameplay uh at the very very end of this trailer at like a minute they show off like a little bit of gameplay um and it it seems fun it seems like a fun game the art design seems you know crazy because it's killer clowns from outer space and i've only seen that movie a couple of times back when i was way way younger uh are either of you planning on picking up this game because i probably am especially if one of you does i mean yeah it's that's the thing is like as long as everyone else is going to be on board yeah definitely and and also assuming that it's going to be a reasonable price like uh 80 dollars if it doesn't go over 30 i think 40 is too much i was thinking 40 at first but i really think 30 is the highest i would go I really yeah. think that the sweet spot would be twenty. It I think be, if, if they could I put doubt, it out for twenty bucks, I doubt it. It probably won't be, just I, because it's a licensed game. It's probably going to be forty, I would imagine. Um, That's too much. And and you know, yeah. So we all we all had two that we picked from, but I do want to have like a bonus mention because Connor wanted to talk about it. Uh, Warhammer forty k Dark Tide. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think about this? It looks good. I, I like that it's it's not just a trailer. They did the opposite again, where instead of like pre-rendered footage, it's all just in-game content, and it looks pretty good. It looks like it's going to be a fun horde beat 'em up, and I like the abilities that they're showcasing. And much like Killer Clowns from Outer Space, it's also a game that I hope I can enjoy with my friends. It's it's left for Warhammer, right? Left Basically. for heresy. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm looking at it. It looks like they've got, they've got guns, they've got melee weapons, and they have all of the all of your favorite Warhammer 40k characters, like giant guy with a machine gun, and other giant guy with a chainsaw. You did it, Horace Lupercal. <laughs> you really are the Warhammer 40,000. <laughs> I don't get the reference, but okay. Um. It's uh it looks it looks like it'll be fun. I I remember I played Vermintide and yeah. that game was pretty okay. Um but I think this game would hopefully be better. Hopefully it'll be a a step up from that. But anyway, you can check out all of the the games I I have a link down below to the IGN article with a bunch of trailers. Uh so you can if you're interested in looking at this, there are a bunch of other games. I thought that uh Arobo was going to want to talk about Sonic. You know, uh, it, you you would think, right? Yeah. Um, it, uh, but the it, it, my response to that is to, to talk about what? I don't know. We, that, we want me to fucking talk. If they've been showing the same footage over and over again. It it still just doesn't look very good. That's and sorry. No, no. What? I, I just wanted to confirm. That's it for the stories that we're talking about today, right? Uh, well, I was gonna say Sonic comes out November eighth. Yeah, and it I, looks, it looks like a fan game. Is yeah, fan. exactly. That's I was ultimately going to get to that. Is the the at least you know on the trailers everything could change, but 
It sure does look like those videos you see where it's like Sonic and Unreal Engine 5. Wow. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to say is that it looks like those Nintendo hire this man. He put Mario into an Unreal Engine demo scene. Like that's it just looks like that. And that being uh, and... said, are you buying this game? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I just can I just admit something on the down though? I and and I think it's mostly because I've been seeing all of the potential that a Steam Deck could be. Mm-hmm. I really want to play through the Sonic Adventure games again on my deck. Uh, you do that. I played through. I I played some of the Sonic Adventure game, like Sonic Adventure Two, which everyone loves, um, and I don't think it's aged very well. I've hundred. I think you're wrong. PC supports, <laughs> and yes, I could tell you they haven't aged the best. I think you're both wrong. Uh, no, the so the, the first one, the first one has its charms, definitely not aged well. Yeah. The second one, only the Sonic levels are good, uh, the Sonic and Shadow levels. Yeah. That said, uh, if you do feel like going through that, would highly recommend looking up uh, the mod loader for Sonic Adventure Two at least. Pro- uh, I think there's one for one as well. It almost definitely is. Uh, because that will allow you to re-enable, or I guess patch in, a lot of the things that were broken or otherwise downgraded in the uh, re-releases. So uh, uh, okay. if you, because like if you compare graphically uh, the Dreamcast versus the GameCube slash PC versions of Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure Two, the Dreamcast version wins every time, hands down. That's sad. Uh, and, it's really sad. And there are even there are even some bugs that were introduced in the GameCube re-releases that are still present in the PC version because PC version's just a port of the uh of the GameCube remake. Why didn't they so. port the Dreamcast version? You Cause, know, cuz DX2 Battle Extreme. <laughs> uh I I don't entirely know. Uh, sometimes other than just they added some extra content in battle they really didn't add all that much in dx it was just like you can unlock game game gear games and like no one cares but yeah i don't know but anyway uh we are gonna we're gonna call it there we're done we're done with the podcast we'll see you next week i want to thank you for being here roa yeah i was mostly here and thank you thank you for being here a Tune in next week to hear about my chow. Your chow? Which are yeah, the little monsters in the chow oh, garden. Sonic Adventure. Oh, oh, right, right. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, that I, thing they, we was which just they talking re- about. They reused that system in Fantasy Star Online too. Yes. Yes, they did. And I will be back next week, Nathan Reitz, with, uh with more podcasting goodness. Thank you for being here. Goodbye. Goodbye. Honk, honk.